All right, first things first, let's take a look at the mage hero talents. I personally have not taken a look and uh, I feel like I need to, I just need to. We gotta see what the heck is going on. So in the War Within, we're gonna have hero talents. So the normal talent tree is staying, hero talents are like in the middle and you get to pick Frostfire, Spell Slinger, or Sun Fury, okay? I hope Frostfire's the best just because Frostfire just looks so cool. But uh, yeah, let's read through all of these and kind of decide which one's going to be the best right here right now, all right? Frostfire Mastery. We read this yesterday. You have one stack of Fire Mastery, one stack of Frost Mastery for each spell that you cast, Fire or Frost respectively. And then you get Haste for your Fire Mastery and Mastery for your Frost Mastery. And you can stack them up to eight times. To be honest, that might be more of a PvE thing. Although... You can do like Dragon's Breath and Ice Lance and just like kind of get these stacks throughout the game. It's just going to passively benefit you. So that's kind of cool too. <clears throat> All right, Imbued Warding. Placing Barrier also casts an Ice Barrier. Okay. So as presumably be able to like slow people with the Ice Barrier. And then Ice Barrier also casts a Blazing Barrier. So like one or the other. You're going to get the benefits of both. That's kind of dope. And Meltdown. So you only get one or the other. Imbued Warding or Meltdown. Um, and you melt slightly out of your ice block and ice cold. Allowing you to move slowly during ice block and increasing your movement speed over time. Ice block and ice cold trigger a blazing barrier when they end. Oh my gosh. I feel like impued warding is probably the move, but that's kind of crazy just running around during ice block. Okay, so a crappy triune. Yeah, but that's strong. That could be strong. Frost Firebolt. There we go, baby. Frost Firebolt back in retail confirmed right there, man. One of my all-time favorite abilities. And it generates a stack of Fire Mastery and Frost, because it's both. So if you spam Frost Fire Bolts, you're going to get Frost Fire Mastery stacked quick. Oh, I wonder if you can get Brain Freeze procs for instant Frost Fire Bolts, and then you just spam those. Like Living Bombs, Frost... Ooh, that sounds kind of sick. All right. Um, Elemental Affinity versus Flame and Frost. So we have another choice. The cooldown of Frost Spell, so the base cooldown is shorter than the 4, is reduced by 30. So not your Ice Block. But things like Icy Veins, Nova, Ice Barrier, Cock, uh, Kona Cold, um, Ring of Frost. Okay. And then for Frost, the cooldown of Fire Spells is reduced by 30. All Fire Spells, maybe including Combustion or something like that. Actually, I don't, know if, I don't know if you can actually get Combust as Frost. Yeah, probably not. So you, you would get cooldown reduction on like Fire Blast. What other Fire spells do you even have? Dragon's Breath. Uh, Blast Wave. Um, stuff like that. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. I don't know which one would necessarily be better. I guess it depends on a lot of other things. And then Flame and Frost... Cauterize resets the cooldown of your frost spells with a base cooldown shorter than four minutes. Oh, that's interesting. So if you get cauterized, you have like another ice barrier, another like ring of frost and, and Kona cold and Nova and stuff like that. Okay. And then for frost, cold snap additionally resets the cooldown of your fire spells. Okay. That's really interesting. I like I like the I like what they're doing here with this tree. They're they're synergizing frost and fire in really unique ways. Um so if you play fire, you can benefit your frost spells. If you're playing frost, you can benefit your fire spells. Kind of like Season of Discovery with um, with the frost fire build we've been playing in Sod. It really makes you start to think the best way to build your character. And I like that. Um, all right. So you have Isothermic Core. Comet Storm calls down a meteor at 100% effectiveness on your target's location. Okay. And then Meteor Storm now also calls a Comet Storm. So both of them will call the other that's interesting so like meteor is with a comet and comets with a meteor all right and that's not a choice node so you just get that um i think you'd, you'd be able to unlock all of them and then the choices are choices casting frost or fire spells increases the damage to your next frost fireball by six stacking up to five okay uh, i wonder if there's gonna be some type of brain freeze because we would need instant cast right Frost Fire Bolt's cast time is reduced by 10. Interesting. So in PvP, you'd probably want severe temperatures, assuming there's a, a way to instant cast. Um, your Frost Fire Spells have a chance to trigger uh, an additional bolt of Frost Fire, dealing Frost Fire uh, damage. 
Okay. Um, excess fire. You have fire and then frost for excess fire. Reaching maximum stacks of fire mastery causes your next fire blast to apply living bomb. When the living bomb explodes, you receive the cooldown of your next phoenix flames. Okay, that seems good for PvE, right? It seems insane for PvE, especially in Mythic Plus. But in PvP, this could break CC and stuff, so that's kind of sketchy. Frost, reaching maximum stacks of fire mastery, causes your next ice lance to apply living bomb. Once again, both of those sound kind of PvE-ness, uh, PvP. Both of these seem better options for player versus environment. Okay, uh, frost, fire, empowerment. Your frost and fire spells have a chance to activate frost fire empowerment, causing your next FFB to deal 100% increased damage and explode for 80% of damage. Once again, good for seems like insane for Mythic Plus. Um, maybe not as good for Arena. Like a lot of the times in Arena, you don't want to just be spamming AOE. Well, <laughs> more modernized Arena, you'd actually do. Um, so that that could go one way or the other. If the meta game is just spam damage, maybe it could be good. Excess Frost. So you have Fire and Frost for Excess Frost. And for Fire, reaching maximum stacks of Frost causes your next Phoenix Flames to Ice Nova. Huh. When you consume Excess Frost, the cooldown of Meteor is reduced. And then reaching maximum stacks of Frost Mastery causes your next Flurry to also cast Ice Nova. <laughs> wow. Okay, so a lot of automatic AoE built into single target abilities. Okay, I mean, that's one direction you can go. That is one direction you certainly can go. Um, okay. I don't care what they say about you, Zara. You're a good dude. Wait, what do they say about me? Uh, Alright, Flash Freeze Burn. Frostfire Empowerment grants you maximum benefits of Frostfire Mastery and it refreshes its duration. Activating Combustor Ice Veins grants you Frostfire Empowerment. So you can get max stacks with Icy Veins or Combust. Boom. Hmm. I don't know. This is interesting. A lot of AOE built in, some cool mechanics. We'd have to see if Brain Freeze works with Frost Firebolt, right? Yeah. What DPI do I use? 800. <laughs> all right, let's check out Spell Slinger now and then we'll check out Sun Fury and just see what's good. Let's go uh, through all of them. Shannon said the baby's been asleep for 45 minutes. Let's go, baby. Massive nap. Let's go. All right, when you consume Nether Precision or Winter's Chill. So Spell Slinger is Frost and Arcane. Frost Fire is Fire and Frost. And Sun Fury is Arcane and Fire. That's pretty cool. I mean, just the idea of it is pretty cool. I have to admit. Is the Alpha out? What this refreshed favorites bar? Skip. Uh, I don't see the alpha yet. All right. Anyway. So every time you consume your Nether Precision or Winner's Chill, you you fire out a Splinter, which is raw magic, and the Splinters embed themselves into their target, dealing additional damage. So it's like a dot. Interesting. Okay. Yo, Whale, thanks for the tier 1 sub. Jivro, thanks for the prime. Welcome in, guys. Casting Arcane Surge conjures 8 Splinters. Okay, so the Spell Slinger might be like around Splinter gameplay. You just stick him with a bunch of Splinters with your Veins or Surge. Okay. So if you're Frost, you can Veins, get 8 Splinters in them immediately, and then maybe spam some winner's chills and get some more splinters and they just die to your splinters. That actually sounds really good for PvP. That sounds really good for PvP, honestly. Well, targets under the effects of Nether Tempest, 20% of the direct damage dealt is um, by a, a splinter is also dealt to nearby enemies. Okay, so maybe not as good. And while a target is under the effects of Blizzard, 20% of the direct damage... Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is like the AoE talent. Um, yeah. One of the things I miss from retail, and I've been pretty transparent about this over the years, is is like single target builds being good. I think sometime around Legion, and we watched a video by Skill Capped about a week or two ago on the YouTube channel that broke this down in depth, but I think sometime in Legion, people started to realize in Arena, you could just start AoEing instead of single targeting, and AoE is just more effective because you do more damage. Like Leg Sweep is an AoE stun with a Monk, 
and then you played with a mage with like arcane orb and like arcane barrage and you just aoe everything and then you don't need to cc at all i think that's bad i think that's bad for arena i think single target style gameplay at least for most comps is good and then having like one or two comps where you could aoe but it seems like every class is going down this like funnel of like let's just push everyone to aoe and this is part of the problem um that we talked about the other day about the homogenization of classes due to the prevalence of mythic plus because in mythic plus you need aoe you need mobility right and now you see classes like this get aoe it kind of ruins the pvp aspect or i shouldn't say ruins but it definitely convolutes things and yeah then you have aoe for every class it becomes more effective then aoe becomes this just spam aoe just 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 spam aoe on as many people as possible then that's just not as mechanically exciting and also not as enjoyable to watch things get confusing and then that we're kind of down that rabbit hole right so we've had that discussion seems like these talents are pushing it further in that direction which if you're blizzard that's smart because mythic plus is a big part of the the majority of the game or um race to world first mythic plus pve stuff like that is the majority of the game and collectibles and pvp i i suppose is some mini game so they're they're doing it right from a business perspective but i think this is pushing the game further away from what arena would probably need to bring it back to like the excitement glory days of an arena meta game that's not only exciting to play but to watch all right with that said let's continue reading on um splintering orbs First time an enemy is damaged by your arcane orb, a conjurer splinter that fires at the damaged target. Arcane orb is increased by 10%. Okay. So it's only the first four times. Interesting. And then the first four times an enemy is damaged by your frozen orb. Okay, so once again. Once again. So, seems like you can just spam splinters. Icy veins, eight splinters. Orb, um, four more splinters, right? Um, yeah, I mean, this, this would definitely be, like, a really interesting build. Get, like, 20 splinters into someone just by spamming, like, Winner's Chill, Veins, Orb, Lance, whatever. Could be really interesting. Whenever an embedded splinter is uh, removed or recalled, it explodes, dealing damage to nearby enemies. Okay, once again, that's more like the AoE track. Uh, each time you conjure an, an Arcane Splinter, increase the damage of your next Supernova. Once again, an AoE track. Okay. Each time you conjure a splinter, increase the damage to your next Ice Nova AoE track. So so here's what I would recommend. Um, because it's easy to complain. It's harder to come up with solutions. And I had this suggestion about eight years ago in Warlords of Draenor. But I'll say it again. Ice Nova AoE does a good amount of damage. AoEs. Supernova AoE does a little damage and a knockup. Right? What if there was a PvP talent that made Ice Nova single target, but deal 100% increased damage, or like 150% increased damage, or like 200, like just increase the damage, but make it single target. And this way in PvP, you can opt for single target experiences, single target builds for like single target comps. Think Thug Cleave, Hunter Rogue, or like um, Warrior... Uh, mage right or um feral hunter or i mean i i, I guess the list goes on but you get the point and the pvp talents kind of shape these aoe talents into combinations for arena that actually make a lot of sense so that's my suggestion right you make pvp talents to remove the aoe for larger damage to make those single target play styles still good viable and exciting to play yeah yeah i think that's probably that could probably be pretty good. Anyway, uh, let's keep moving on. Your Prismatic Barrier and Ice Barrier can absorb up to 50% more health based on your missing health. So if you get like a really low barrier, interesting. Max, max effectiveness went under 50%. So maybe they don't want you to barrier unless you're 50. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Your Mirror Images summons an extra clone and the Mirror Image is all damage taken. Okay, cool. It's probably that Reactive Barrier. This one seems pretty good for PvP so far. Slippery slinging! You have a 40% increased movement speed during altar time. So you're just sprinting around. Wow. Seems pretty good. Displacement has a 50% longer duration and a longer range. Those bows seem really good. I don't know. Shifting shards. 
Shifting power fires a uh, barrage of eight splinters at a random enemy. He's nice. Nice, dude. Okay, yeah, we'll just skip over that one. Uh, spell frost teachings. Direct damage from an arcane splinter has a 5% chance uh, to summon an arcane echo that deals damage to all nearby enemies, increases the damage enemies take from you. Okay, okay. And from the frost side of things, direct damage from a splinter has a 5% chance to summon an icy comet. Okay, once again, yeah, this AoE style stuff. Um, force of will, gain 2% increased crit chance and gain 5% increased crit damage. Wow, that's okay, that's just like a good, good talent in general, especially for frost. Um, so you could go like Frost, Spell Slinger, or Arcane Spell Slinger, presumably. And those would be completely different builds. Arcane Spell Slinger and Frost Spell Slinger would be completely different builds, despite still being Spell Slinger, which is really rad. Uh, really, really cool idea. Splinter Storm. Whenever you have eight or more active embedded splinters, you automatically cast a Splinter Storm. Recall all embedded splinters to you, dealing their remaining periodic damage instantly. After a brief delay, unleash a devastating barrage of splinters, dealing damage to your target for each splinter storm in this point. Wow. So you'd like, you'd like double double. Sounds like you'd like double dip a little bit. Arcane would give you clear casting, and splinter storm would give you winner's chill. Damn. Lots of variety. What are we thinking about this, chat? What are we thinking about this? Wait till you read Sun Fury? Yeah, we saved the best for last, man. Needler build. Yeah, this is kind of like the Needler from uh, Halo. Yeah, you're right. It's a Needler build. That's funny. I forgot about that weapon. Sun Fury. I've heard a lot about. Someone linked me a clip from Preheat showing off the Sun Fury build. Apparently, it goes pretty darn hard. So we'll see that in a second. Spell Fire Spheres. Let's take a look. Every four times you consume clear casting, you conjure a sphere. Every six times you consume a hot streak, you conjure a sphere. And while you're out of combat, you will slowly conjure spheres over time. The spheres increase spell damage and stack. Wow, so that's just good. That's just good. Okay. Consume clear casting grants you 3% haste. Um, and consuming hot streaks grants you 2% haste. That's just good. Already, this sounds like the best tree for PvP. It just seems good. When you cast Arcane Surge, Combustion, you summon a Phoenix to aid you in battle. Your Arcane Phoenix aids you for the duration of your Surge or Combustion, casting random Fire and Arcane spells. Over its duration, your Phoenix will consume each of your Spell Fire Spheres to cast an exceptional spell. Good, unless it breaks CC. If that breaks CC, it's scary. But like overall, like it's still kind of cool. Burden of power. Conjuring a sphere causes your next blaster barrage to deal damage. And conjuring a sphere causes your next pyro or flame strike. That's so good for fire, man. Fire mages are going to take over, dude. Fire sun fury mages are going to go dumb. Dumb hard, dude. Merely a setback. Your prismatic barrier, arcane. Flame barrier, fire. Now grounds 5% avoidance while active and leech. Jeez, that's so good. The Sun Fury tree is just so good. Oh, here it is, guys. I saw this on Twitter. Gravity Lapse replaces Blast Wave. All right. The snap of your fingers warps gravity around your target and two other nearby enemies, suspending them in air for three seconds. And upon landing, nearby enemies take arcane damage. That is so cool. That is like the coolest mage ability I've seen them add in so long. Like that is awesome. That is really cool. I like that. That actually sounds fun to mess around with. This one seems like the move. Sun Fury, Fire Sun Fury seems like the move. Glorious Incandescence. Consuming Burden of Power. Always oh, Burden of Power again? Oh, it's this one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Causes your next cast of Arcane Orb to call down a Storm of Meteorites. Okay. And it reduces the cool on your next orb. Wow. Consuming Burden of Power causes your next Phoenix Flame to call down a Storm of Meteorites. Okay. It's just like extra, little extra oomph, so to speak. All right. So here you can choose Overflowing Power. 
or Sun Fury Execution. With overflowing power, your Surge or Combust uh, has an extended duration for each Spellfire, uh, Spellfire Sphere you have. Okay. So you could keep extending the duration, make it longer. Sure. With Sun Fury Execution, you get Arcane Bombardment damage uh, increase so you can execute people better with the uh, Bombardment spell. Or your Fire Searing Touch Execute, so to speak, is a little bit better as well. Scorch deals 170 increased damage and guaranteed crit. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, Overflowing Power might just be better. Get longer Combust, get another Combust, who knows. Codex of the Sunstrider. Summoning an Arcane Phoenix grants you a Spellfire Sphere. Wow, okay. That's good synergy. <laughs> and your Arcane Phoenix can now cast Greater Pyroblast. Um, is that even fair? <laughs> um. Huh? Okay. Nice. That seems... Okay, yeah. Fire Sun Fury is by far the best. If I'm reading this correctly. Goodness gracious. Spellfire Spheres can now stack up to five times. Ignite the future. Generating a Spellfire Sphere while your Phoenix is active causes it to cast an exceptional spell. Ooh. Ooh. That means more greater pyroblasts. Jeez. Wow. Okay. Wow. I'm just thinking about a lot of things there. That seems nuts. All right. Last talent here for Sun Fury. We got Memory of Alar. While your Arcane Phoenix is active, you gain twice as many stacks of mana addiction. What is mana addiction? Arcane. When your Arcane Phoenix expires, it empowers you, granting Arcane Soul for three seconds, plus an additional one second for each exceptional spell. Arcane Soul is Arcane Missiles have a 100% chance to proc clear casting. Okay. But for fire, when your Arcane Phoenix expires, it empowers you, granting Hypothermia for three seconds, plus an additional one second. And Hypothermia, you can spam Pyros. Well, boys. I can say with a, a pretty high level of certainty that Fire Sun Fury seems to be the build. Yep. I mean, it, yeah. There's like, it just seems after reading through everything, there's a lot of interesting things to consider, but this seems to be absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. Yeah. And then uh, here, we can watch this again. We watched this a little bit earlier. This is preheat. Okay, so when you're actually playing Sun Fury, this is what your mage is going to look like. You're going to have these flame orbs above your head. Remember, these are the fuel that your Phoenix uses to cast those exceptional spells. Uh, we go into our combustion right away. As soon as we activate combustion, the Phoenix pops out here. You can see him right here. going to hop up and down, and the Phoenix is just going to go crazy casting those big spells, and you can see all of his damage popping up over here. Now, as soon as I get my spell ready, you'll notice these meteors flying down. That's whenever I use my Phoenix Flame after the Burn of Power. And then now that we're outside of Combustion, we have Hyperthermia, so I'm able to just machine gun those Pyroblasts while being able to cast while moving the entire time. And then uh, what we're going to do here is try to get back into Combustion as soon as possible. You notice I overcap just a little bit on the Fire Blast here. It's a little hard to, uh, to do all this with default UI, but uh, it, right now we have our Combustion up again. So we're going to go ahead and go right back into Combustion here. Phoenix comes out again, casting these big spells. He casts meteors, he casts arcane surges, Phoenix flames, all that good stuff. Uh, greater pyroblast as well. And then, uh do you guys think that'd be enough damage to kill someone in arena? Like, yeah, that 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 seems absolutely bonkers. <laughs> like, like you, <laughs> oh my gosh, like that is that's just wild, man. It's just wild. So yeah, there we go, man. Those are the hero talents. Looking good.